What a lot of people tend to misunderstand is that, oh, I could just record stuff with my camera. I mean, you could, but there's levels to this. You know what I'm saying? Uh, what people tend to not understand is that the lower that F number is, the more light the lens naturally lets in, okay. which in turn can help you not have to raise your ISO as much. When you get a client like that that's not too detailed of the work or what the vision is that or the end goal of what they want it to be, right? how do you try to get that information out of them when they don't necessarily know what their end goal is? Man, that's a that's a good question, man. Hey, what's good, everybody? We're back again with another interview. I got Grill with me today. He's a videographer. He's been doing a lot of things. He's a part of CEO Network with me as well. It's been a lot of fun, man, getting to know you and everything. So I wanted to bring you on, kind of talk to people, let them know what you've been doing, what you, uh, you know, the work you've been doing, and what you got going on in the future, and just kind of give some insights to people about if they want to become a, a videographer. So um, tell the people who you are, a little bit of your background to, to start off. Okay, perfect. So uh, I'm glad to be here, Leonard. Uh, my name's Grill. I am I do videography, professional videography and photography based out of Houston, Texas, you know, out here in Miami, you know, since CEO network. Um, just some basic information. Um, I'm Colombian and Salvadorian uh, descent heritage. And, uh, you know, ironically, what got me into videography and photography was acting, believe it or not, okay. you know, and stuff. So yeah. was you doing like like smaller acting like little theaters in your hometown like what what type mm. of acting was you doing that, that got you into it oh well uh it was actually ironic because i remember it was approximately i think five six years ago i was just going to the mall at the time just to pay my dad's phone bill at the time and then i saw a poster that said something about acting contest or modeling contest going on yeah and i filled it out and i went to it and I kid you not, uh, something in me was just telling me I have to do this. I couldn't explain why, but it was like an it was like I was feeling it through my whole body. I have to do this. Yeah. So when I did it, long story short, I did good to where I was in part of the agency, but I was very ill ill informed of how the process works. Like you have to do a lot of, you know, leg work and stuff. You don't you, you don't just get to sit back. Yeah. And just let all the opportunities come to you. That's not how it works, you know? Yeah. And I was shaking, actually, when I when I did a monologue. I did the one from Our Deepest Fear from Coach Carter. Oh, okay. Because that one resonated to me a lot because when I think about it, that's really what, what most people are really afraid of. It's not, it's not what they can't do. It's what they can't do, and that frightens them because yeah. they think, like, look, like, take me, for example. Uh, I'm 28. You know, saying they had diagnosed me with like a malform of like Asperger's syndrome in high school, and like most people on the spectrum, they're not ever expected to become anything. You yeah. know, well, that's so it's like you're able was to. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so I, yeah, it's been just about overcoming. Yeah, definitely. So, what was that pivotal moment that wanted you to change from acting to going doing videography? Honestly, it was the fact that like when doing acting it was becoming difficult to like really pursue it full time because my friend Drake Malone he's more than likely going to be famous in the next few years if he's not already uh he told me one key thing that he was able to do that helped him be able to pursue acting full time was he had a business you know okay so that's how he was able to go to Atlanta anywhere he needed to go to do audition and I realized ultimately having a job is just going to hold you back from really being able to go into, it, especially money wise, you know what I'm saying? Because you can't be homeless, you know what I'm saying? If you can't pay for flights, gas and stuff. So that's when I started to realize, OK, let me try to figure something out. And then then it hit me. Wait, I'm always visualizing all kinds of scenarios in my head very vividly, you know? Yeah. And as I started to do photos and videos more three years ago, that creativity only started getting stronger and stronger, you know, to where I can imagine a scenario and literally imagine what it would feel like to sit in a chair eating a food, you know what I'm saying? Whether it be, you know, drinking something or whatever it is, you know, like it started getting so powerful that I felt obligated to see this through and figure it out. Absolutely. So um, with, your, with your type of content and your videos, like what what was some of the tips that was given to you? Because you just mentioned one, but what was some of the tips that was given to you at the beginning that helped you set off into the right steps? And what are some things that you wish you knew that you, if you could go back, you, it would change a lot of things for you. <laughs> Man, uh, well, to answer that question, uh, the tips that, because in the very beginning, like I focused when I was looking on how to just understand composition, lighting, and storytelling. Yeah, I always focused on YouTube channels that were very technical about it because this may sound odd, but I didn't want to be influenced too much by people's styles. I really genuinely wanted to make my own style, but understand the the fundamentals I need to be aware of 
when it comes to you know b-roll shots storytelling uh lighting how to put like if you're if you're shooting the type of content what to be aware of angles and honestly like most of it was just me like improvising on the fly yeah. if i'm being honest with you just being creative like that but then understanding that if i combine that with some structure that'll help me go far yeah because i've heard that from a lot of other videographers where they're like you know everybody's trying to figure out their style and they said that what they always tell people to do is just you know go watch what you go watch a couple people figure out what you that they're doing that you like and then figure out how to put your own twist to that and before you know it your own style starts to come into mm -hmm. fruition for you Bingo. so it's just basically studying and seeing what you liked and didn't like it and combining some of the tricks kind of like we was talking earlier right with the, the lighting situation yep. right how you said you wanted to do some of these lighting different things to to um do your own little creative little technique. So what are some things that you're doing that just puts a little spin on your content and the, the, the shots that you film that kind of makes you stand out from the others? Oh, okay. Well, when it comes to that part, part, part specifically <laughs> about lighting, uh, what I've noticed is depending on where you're shooting is going to determine how you have to adjust your settings and your camera, how you position it, because one thing that I've learned is that like people would think that, oh, if you're taking a photo, oh, just put the light right in front of them. Yeah. Not necessarily because you kind of always want to have it be kind of like at an angle, not directly head on. Right. So that way it creates more of a cinematic shot okay. and stuff. And depending on which angle you do, you know, which angle, the height, how intense you have the light, how you have the light pointed at them is going to determine how that light just, whoosh, you know, yeah. flashes on them. And, I, and sometimes I like to give it a warm, cool feeling to it, or sometimes I go more cool or warm depending on, you know, where I'm at and the type of outfit they're wearing, yeah. you know, saying the type of pose they're doing, the content, you know, to give a certain vibe. There's definitely a lot of variables come to that because, like, so many people ask me even with some of the content I do, which I don't have the, the knowledge that you have. And they'll be like, well, okay, so what do I need to do for settings for this so I'm good every time? And it's like, it's never going to be a good every time. You're going to mm. have to tweak and change. Oh, yeah, you always got to do that, man. Ain't no such thing as, oh, right here, we're going to do this, these type of settings. Bet over there, nah, it's always changing because people think think because what a lot of people tend to misunderstand is that oh i could just record stuff with my camera i mean you could but there's levels to this you yeah. know what i'm saying so many people think that they can just get the equipment get the camera and it's like the camera's going to do the work for them it's like no you still need no exposure lighting angles all these other Dango. things to come in to get the right shot to get the you know the cinematic view or the aesthetic view that you're trying to get so um is there any tricks on like learning how to understand lighting a little bit more? Because that's some of the things that's been like the, one of the most difficult things for me is just understanding and figuring out the lighting in the situations. Oh, yeah. So key thing is sometimes in some situations, make sure you have the right lenses for one, because in some because if you have a lens that's F stop number in particular, because in some situations you're going to need an F stop to be lower, because if an F stops like at one point eight. Yep. versus 5.5 .5, uh what people tend to not understand is that the lower that f number is the more light the lens naturally lets in okay which in turn can help you not have to raise your iso as much and not have to mess with the you won't have to mess with the shutter speed as much because the higher the shutter speed number the less light gets in the lower the shutter speed the more light comes in yeah and that's that's what i had to learn too because like i got this camera here and i like i said I, I, beforehand i wish i would have known a little bit more because it doesn't let in as much light as i would like it to do mm -hmm. too so definitely do research and understand your equipment but then also understand how to operate and use your equipment that's a real thing because a lot of people have good equipment and then still don't get the shots that they want to get just because they don't know those little fine-tuning tools that they need to do so so what are some projects that you've been working on and projects that you enjoy working on that you're trying to do more in the future with well uh funny you should ask that because uh the projects that i've enjoyed working on the most has honestly been parties yeah because i've always ever since i was a little kid i've always genuinely enjoyed meeting people from all walks of life different cultures and parties has just always been one of those really good venues events that you can meet all sorts of people yeah. in that in your niche so because in business to scale up you have to focus on your niche and when you focus on your niche you know sometimes you'll get some people say hey do you do this or this but you still primarily focus on your niche and for projects that i'm working on well right now i'm gonna do i'm working on you know saying since i've been in miami i've been recording content you know saying for the ceo network photos and videos for fresh you know and yeah. then got some footage of myron yesterday too so that was dope and uh 
that one's been very enjoyable because it's all about money, love, speed, you know? Yeah. So one thing that I've been holding myself accountable for, to in getting faster is knowing how to just get faster with doing the edits. And if there's something I don't know how to do, outsourcing. Because I've had to have that honest conversation with myself that just because I may not know how to do something editing-wise doesn't mean I should let that keep happening because I'll just have to outsource that so that way people can really see what's in here, you know, because I'm doing the world a disservice if I don't. Right. And that, that's some things I get to uh, talk to because you talk about going to parties to get clients. And that's kind of what I want to ask you, too, is like, how do you get clients? Because some people come up to me and they're like, I love to do music videos, but I can't, it's, hard, <clears throat> it's hard finding artists to do music videos with. And I'll tell them, like, hey, go to some of the local shows that's around. Shoot their performance for them for, for you know, shoot it and be like, hey, you know, I give you this performance video for free when you if you book a music video with me. Mm -hmm. Book a music video, you get this performance video free, and you got a new client because they're getting to see your work right then before you're offering anything because they get to see because you, you know you can take some shot or you tell somebody like, hey, I can do this, and they're like a little worried, but then you show me like, oh. oh, okay, yeah, bro, we need to work together for sure. So I'll tell them like, go go to local events, film their performances for them, and then like, hey, you know, you get a music video, I'll give you this performance edit for free, and that's the way. So is there any more tricks outside of just parties? or that people can do that will help them gain clients when they're starting off? Oh, yes. Uh, so aside from like the parties that I get paid to, you know, go record photos and videos for, networking events is definitely important, like music events, like reggaeton events, like, you know, like being aware of events that's going on in your area is going to be important. And one thing I've had to learn too, and this is the part where it gets tricky, I admit, that like knowing how like i remember i read this read this in 50 cents book a uh, hustle smarter shout out to him yeah. and uh, he mentioned that uh, there was one part where he said always be about the money but understand the situations where you have to provide value on some level and even fresh was telling me this a while back that like yeah on some level i do have to do that you know so in order to keep expanding that's 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 that, that's how i'm here to begin right. with you know but knowing how to not overdo it too much like if you do that don't let people take advantage of you and do it, you know. In some cases, it might make sense to do it for somebody a little bit more. Yeah. But for the most part, you always have to put a limit just to keep balance and making sure people don't take advantage. Because here's the thing. You're doing people a disservice if you don't charge accordingly. Because if you don't charge accordingly, then you can't prioritize their stuff. You know, saying their content getting done. And they're going to wonder, oh, why? But Because at that point, it's going to be hard for you to get them to want to pay you. Yeah. Because you didn't set that frame from the beginning, you know. Because how they talk about in dating setting frame you got to set frame in business too you know yeah and it's been tricky you know because when i was first starting out uh i really just started off with my you know friend tad shout out to you bro and uh like he was so you know so i was taking photos of him just with all you know saying different you know peak groups of friends he had you know saying when he was single you know yeah and all this stuff different girls and like that helped me out a lot and then you know i started focusing on parties and music videos more like reggaeton music recently because i fucking love yeah, the, the you, love you know what i'm saying because i'm hispanic you know what yeah. i'm saying so i love that so no yeah because that's what I've, a lot of people and we've, we've been sitting around here within the ceo network talking about this and a lot of people's like you don't focus on the money you focus on a problem solve that problem and then you can make money off of that so many people's figuring out how how do i make this and make the money off it's like man figure out a problem figure out how to solve that problem and the money will come along with that bingo bro because uh it's funny it's, i'm really glad you brought that point up because Whenever I set up photo shoots or video shoots for, you know, for like parties or like people, yeah. I always really because there's been some situations where they don't want to like take the time to really sit down and talk about what they want. Because me, I'd rather you be very like detailed in an, however OCD it is, because at least it lets me literally helps me better focus my creativity to better help out with getting the product done. So if there's something editing wise that I may not know how to do, I can outsource that and explain it specifically yeah. to my, to my editor. So that way that can help out with making sure that the client gets what they want. So when you get a client like that, that's not too detailed of the work or what the vision is that, or the end goal of what they want it to be, right? How do you try to get that information out of them when they don't necessarily know what their end goal is? Man, that's a man, that's a good question, man. <laughs> like <laughs> what I've had to learn, given that that's how most of my experience started off in the beginning, I had to learn that videography and photography is one of those uh, professions that it really forces you, however good or how bad you sucked with reading people, it forces you to really get better at reading people. Like 
I start thinking, okay, let me pay attention to the tone in their voice when they're talking about certain subjects. Chop it up with them a bit, you know what I'm saying? Just, yeah. you know what I'm saying, shoot the shit with them yeah. and stuff. Pay attention to, like you're saying, their facial expressions, you know what I'm saying, their body language and stuff and, like, how they're talking to you, you know what I'm saying, and see what matters to them because e, if they can't tell me directly what they want, my job is to get to know that person better than they might know themselves so that way I can know what matters to them, you know? Yeah, so is there any, like, go-to questions you try to, to ask to kind of get a more feel of, like, the overall project from them? Or is it just more or less just sitting around having conversations and feeling the vibe from them? That's part of it. The other specific questions I would ask would be something more along the lines of, like, okay, like, if it's a party, for example, I'm asked, okay, what kind of party is it? You know what I'm saying? Like, Hey, what kind of, are you going to have dancers there? You know what I'm saying? Like, how is the layout going to be? You know what I'm saying? And stuff like that. Like, you know, asking detailed questions about the venue, okay. the type of party it's going to be, because each type of party and venue, it's all about how do I use the venue? Right. How do I use the people and the products, like people serving alcohol, liquor? I mean, you see all kinds of shit at these parties, man. You know what I'm saying? People like, you know what I'm saying? The way people pour liquor, people getting crazy in the pool, twerking, people rolling up and all that smoking and shit, like yeah. all of it. And different parties are going to need more of certain aspects because that's all, you know what I'm saying? Because when you're in a party, we see all of that stuff, you know what I'm saying? It's really more simple than people make it out to be. Each party and event is going to prioritize different aspects of that. And right. it's all about the angles and what way you do it. And then, of course, getting people's expressions, you know, like, yeah. and all that stuff. Because certain parties, it's going to be good to get certain kinds of expressions out of people, get certain content out of them, you know? Okay, so just kind of research what, what the event is and, and do your own type of homework. So starting off, because like we was talking earlier, camera equipment can be expensive. It gets really expensive depending on the type of camera oh, you want yeah. and the lenses. So what are some base lenses you started off with or that you recommend uh, a videographer to start off with so they ain't got to break the bank right off the jump. Okay, perfect. So around three years ago when COVID started, my very first camera that I had was the Canon Rebel T6. It was an 18 to 55 millimeter, if I remember correctly. The f-stop was 3.5 to 5.6. Okay. And it was pretty good at taking photos, you know what I'm saying? And uh, other than that, if you just get yourself like a 50 millimeter lens and then get another and then get like a 75 85 millimeter lens and get just one more lens that's like a little bit more wide yeah because sometimes aside from using your iphone in some cases it'll be good to use like maybe like an eight or ten millimeter lens that way it could be have that wide effect too but from a camera perspective uh honestly you really don't need much more than that but when it comes to cameras uh like i have the canon eos 90d at the moment that i'm primarily shoot with and I remember the most humbling video I ever watched was where they had a rookie, you know, a beginner. They gave him access to the Red Cinema gear. You know, it was like $20,000 with the whole setup, you know, you know. But they gave a pro a Canon SL2, $600 camera setup. That's all he had. But because of his knowledge of editing, lighting, you know, and settings, he was able to completely outclass the beginner who had access to the most expensive gear. Now, if you gave the pro that gear, oh, he'd probably make it look even better, but it's all about working with what you can because you're when you're starting out, you're not always going to have access to everything you would ideally want. Yeah. So you got to do the best you can with what you have and just build off of that and work from there. And then in time, depending on what type of content you're going to do specifically, then upgrade accordingly on the camera. Yeah, because it kind of goes back to the point we was talking about earlier. Like, you can have the best equipment, but if you don't know what you're doing with it, it ain't really going to matter. And you can have some subpar equipment, but if you know what you're doing with it, you can still make some great content. Because, like, even it's like some of the iPhone commercials we see now, like, they're filmed on an iPhone, and you'd be like, there's no way. They got to have the cranes. They got to have the big camera setups and all this and that. But if you know how to work with what you're working and how to set your ISO and all these little lighting and tr tricks and techniques that, like, you can get – good footage out of anything as long as you know how to properly shoot footage so who are some people or, or what are some things that you were studying to help get you to the place where you needed to get more cinematic shots for that one uh i would definitely say that the and this is where i'll go into the topic of like the photography photographers that have inspired me yes manny ortiz was one he's a he's a pop in youtuber i believe he's based out of new york okay it's stuff uh the way he would record his videos, and then this other uh, female YouTuber, uh, Jessica, Co I don't know if I'm saying her last name, Kowalski or something like that. Okay, don't worry, uh, I put your names all the time too, bro. No, 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 no it's all good. <laughs> like, both of them, and then also Mike Tang 
is okay. someone else that's really good. Uh, the reason what I liked about Jessica is because I kind of watched because because you know sometimes you 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 know what I'm saying you have to deal with girls and all that when you do parties or photo shoots. Uh, I'll watch how she interacts with the girls, and then I'll watch how Manny interacts, and then kind of be like. Mm, okay, I see why they're going about it that way because everyone's different. So you kind of have to, it's all about learning how to calibrate myself with while still being authentic, you know? Okay. Because I'll have situations when I first started out where I'll recommend ideas for the next shoot and they'll be like, oh yeah, I actually would have been down to do that. So it kind of goes into another subject where like you have to be willing to be a bit of a risk taker in the sense that they may react negatively to you doing this, but it's all about being a bit more firm, be like, look, I'm trying, really wanting to, you know? Okay. And so stuff not, like So you're not even only just paying attention to how they're shooting and making content, but you're also watching how they behave when they're shooting the content and how they're handling their clients. Bingo, exactly, and stuff, you know? And then going from there accordingly and then just taking the advice to say, it's all, the core of it all is being creative, but learning how to really trust the instincts as cliche as that sounds, you know, saying shout out to Dragon Ball, you know, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's part of it too. And, uh, you know, really taking the time to like center your whole heart and soul, you know, as yeah, well. Absolutely. Okay. So, so what are some projects that you're trying to get into in, into the future? Cause we talked a little bit about this off camera. So what are some things that you're trying to, you know, start migrating, uh, some more projects into that you haven't really done well, uh, definitely, I think we talked about one just now. Definitely reggaeton music is definitely one that I want to get into more of yeah. because uh, when I started doing photos and videos, like that was one niche that I really want to get into. A shout out to, you know, big uh, <laughs> shout out to Big Mo underscore B-I-T-W, best in the world. Uh, I want to get into more reggaeton music because one thing that's always fascinated me is this. If you look at rap videos versus reggaeton videos, one thing you'll oddly notice is Spanish reggaeton music videos tend to be more simple, but they're very creatively well done when it comes to the shots, the angles. They'll, do, they'll throw in some effects here and there. Yeah. But it's always unique to me how some of those videos be getting so much more views than even the rap videos. Because even the rap videos be getting views in the millions. Don't get it twisted. Right. But you look at someone like Bad Bunny, you know? Yeah. And stuff like a video he shot with Drake, uh, you know, a, a Daikiti, you know? Those videos were not very much edited, but just the way they executed the cinematic shots, you know, yeah. was very well done. So it's, you know, so I will really want to get into more reggaeton music. And when it comes to parties, uh, one type of parties I would really want to start doing is like rave parties. Yeah. That would be lit. You know what I'm saying? On a Dad. whole nother level. But that's where I'm, I'm you know, so I'm going to have, I'm going to have to have a team with me, you know. Yeah. I the, can't. That's, that's a big crowd. That's a lot of moving uh, parts that goes on to those types of events yeah you would definitely need a group with you yeah exactly and not even that too but like even doing like more yacht parties that would be whoo man because that's where it gets lit you know what I'm saying you could meet because when you do those kind of parties man you meet girl people who do parties music videos reggaeton rap videos or even people who do like of content and stuff and yeah. like it's all goes hand in hand you know they do you know people with exotic cars yeah absolutely absolutely so uh can you discuss any specific techniques or strategies that you employ to consistently deliver high quality videos to your clients? What I do on that part is a, I'll talk more about the editing part for this one is I'll make sure that my settings are always good. But when it comes to the editing part, I make sure to have like the color grading correctly done. I look at the transitions I have at my disposal to use the graphics titles, the way I, the way I introduce titles into the video and stuff, what effects I use at what angles do I put once, do I stack one video on top of the other? And, uh, also one key thing when it comes to exporting, because this is the foundation, cause you could do everything correctly, but if you don't export something correctly, the client's going to be like, what the fuck is, you know, saying like, excuse my language, what the fuck is this, you know, yeah. and all that. Like, you have to make sure that if you shoot in 4K or HD, you have to make sure you export it correctly and stuff. And if you want to give a certain movie feel, definitely shoot at 24. Maybe you could shoot something at 60 frames, yeah. but then convert it to 24 frames because that's another key thing that some people forget to do that if you want to be able to have slow motion shots in like, like in, you know how they do it in movies yeah. where it'll be like something that goes like, you know. But then it's like very buttery smooth. It's because more than likely they probably shot at a higher frame rate than 24 frames and brought it down to 24 frames a second. You know? Yeah. You have to make sure you export it out. Right. Okay. Because that's what I was told to. Is like, you know, 
industry standards around 24 frames per second, right? But if you're trying to go slow mo, you got to go higher than that. So when you slow mo, it'll take away those little skips and pauses. Yeah, because yeah, exactly. Because it'll kind of look like yeah, glitchy. versus it looking like that, you know, like you're lagging on a video game, but then yeah, exactly. You go higher frame rates, and then you slow it down to your 24, then everything starts to get that more slower smoother cinematic feel with that slow motion feel exactly and stuff like that you know what I'm saying and really taking advantage of every little moment you see when you when 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 you do videos like one thing i've started to experiment with recently is i'll i'll have the shutter speed go very low to where it looks kind of choppy but that type of technique is very useful whenever you see people start drinking or they're smoking and all that and then transition slowly from that back to or better yet start off with like it being like smooth and then transition into that to kind of display the effect of what they're smoking or drinking, you know? Yeah. To give it more of that trippy psychedelic feel, you know? Yeah, exactly. Okay. And so we've talked about quite a bit already, but like everybody goes through a little bit of a slumps and stuff. So like it's good having clients going through that, but like during slow times or when things are getting frustrated, file might crash, editing's not working, rendering time is taking Oh, forever. tell me about it, bro. So how do you stay motivated in those times as a videographer to keep keep going? Uh, man, man, this is nah, man. This is the guy who knows how to ask some questions, man, <laughs> on my soul. But like, hey, uh, honestly, there was a time that I believed in being motivated, but at this point, I believe in discipline. And I was I, I gotta give my shout out to Andrew Tay, man. It'll be an honor to meet you one day, man. A hey, uh, that because there's gonna be times whenever you're editing, something will not be exporting right, or something will be fucking up, and then like I have to call support to make to help me figure out what it is because sometimes it'd be weird you have to be call, you make sure things are moving around yeah but on the part about being motivated and inspired there's definitely been times where even me you know saying i'm only human you know yeah and like what i do when i've had those moments where i feel like i'm in a rut i genuinely remind myself of have i you know i, t- I start talking to myself like i start this is how powerful my imagination is i start visualizing myself having a conversation with that part of myself that's like that's like bro have you forgotten what they said to us you know have you forgotten why you started this remember remember that creativity like i think about like me talking to my future self where we're just flying throughout the world and stuff and showing like look at everything you've done why did you start you know saying really that part of myself asking me the questions of remember why you started doing this to begin with because when you're going through the motions you can kind of kind of start losing your edge yeah but you have to be around people that keep you sharp for one and two is having those moments where you just take a break, you know, take you take a breather, maybe going for a walk, going to go work out, yeah. going doing yoga, go do something fun with your friends and stuff. Because I remember I read a book, I forget the name of the book, but it was about creativity at the time, like nine, ten years ago I read it. Yeah. And it mentioned that whenever you, to avoid that from happening, always like kind of break away a little bit from it just to like do something different to recharge your creative flow it could be having this conversation it could be having a conversation with somebody you see yeah you know, saying in miami or whatnot and just mixing it up not not always being doing the same things you got to break the cycle a bit that, that's something like me and niles talked about during our interview is like how to stay you know um re-energizing your tank to not always keep working and working just to find something that you can do that's you know that that re-energizes yourself and we talked about mr beast for a little bit like mr beast plays board games that's his way of re-energizing. So in between breaks and in between filming, him and his friends will go play board games, and that's his way of re-energizing everything for it. And I always tell people, too, you know, like, like you were saying, always remember your why for why you started and where you came from. That way it keeps you motivated and pushing and disciplined. And then off to the another, next point that you said as well is that hard work beats talent when talent fails to work hard. Mm-hmm. So even if you got all that talent, if you're not going to go in there and put in the work and the dedication every day, because like we said – that now that's why I love the way that you you answer that because it's more about dedication than motivation and I I'm a, I agree a hundred percent because you got to treat like like Andrew Tate says right you got to treat your bad days the same as you do your good days just Bingo. because you woke up one day and you're not feeling it doesn't mean you still don't need to attack it as the day that you felt like oh I was I'm ready I'm gun ho I'm ready to run through a wall you need to treat every day that same way no matter how how you're feeling so that discipline comes in very handy for that yeah because ironically that might be the days where you'll genuinely surprise yourself 
yourself that you might do way better than you thought. And another thing that I've been really resonating with from Andrew Tate is when he says that there's a whole lot of people in this world doing amazing things that you're not doing and you need to let that piss you off <laughs> on a primal level because that one part when he was on the podcast and he was talking to those girls about like how now you're going to sit here and end your own bloodline. I started thinking to myself how as a lot of guys, you know, saying like fall into that trap where they don't start thinking about that. Like, cause I really started thinking like about, I want to honor my dad, my bloodline and like all my ancestors, everything they ever fought and struggled for yeah. all the times that they didn't want to go to work when they didn't feel like it just for me to quit like a bitch. Nah, I'm going on, you know what I'm saying? Like, nah, like, nah, bro, that's not how I'm, how I'm going to define my legacy, you know? Right. Yeah. Build, all that. build that legacy, especially like for me. And I can see it's kind of the same for you. It's like build that legacy and may and build up something that's going to outlast your lifetime. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you, that's honestly what I aim for is that with everything I have planned to do and stuff, I really want to, you know, create a leg. I want to really spark that next because I've, I've heard a quote once uh, from a game that said, all it takes to change the course of history is the will of a single man. And creative creativity is a foundational part of humanity's evolution. You know? Yeah. It's foundational. Whatever type of technology or creative things are created creativity can come from anywhere you know not everyone can be a great artist but a great artist can come from anywhere you know yeah and it and who knows what me doing what i'm doing what type of ripple effects throughout the vast oceans of time that it will that will create you know yeah that's something i was told too early on was that you don't know you never know who's watching and who you could be inspiring who's actually looking up to you even though you might see yourself as this and what you're doing there's somebody starting off lower than you that is looking up to you for guidance and 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 uh for structure so a lot of times i had to go out there and start handling and composing myself in a different way just to understand that even though i feel like i'm here and i'm humble there's other people looking up to me so even though i'm humble trying to learn from others i also got to reach back and get back and mentor to other people as well yeah no it'd be like that you know saying having mentors is important shout out to Viganami in the background and stuff like that you know yeah. saying i've been doing content for him so we got some more stuff coming out and stuff and like yeah just staying consistency is the name of the game and you never know what'll be the content that just goes yeah you know yeah, and really the, only way, the only way to get better at this stuff is actually go out and practice it. You can sit there watching YouTube videos, sitting in your house, studying, 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 but until you go actually and, and put this into practice, that's when things start to actually resonate with you and start to actually sync with you and stay with you when you start putting those things into practice because a lot of people just want to read or learn about it and they're like, well, I know how to do it. Well, no, you don't know how you do it until you actually go out there and do it because understanding reading and of how to do it and then actually going to do it is two completely different things yep training is half will is everything yeah exactly exactly we learned that yesterday huh <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> Whew. so uh have there been any specific technology advances or changes in the industry that have significantly influenced your work hmm technology wise uh that's something I definitely am always on the lookout for. Yeah. Because in time, I am going to upgrade from my current camera to having one that can maybe shoot at 8K. Yeah. Just because I've seen videos that can shoot at 8K. And, oh, man, it looks so sexy, man. Oh, it God. does. You know, man, those files are so large, though, bro, but they do look good. Yeah. And it's like, you know, you could, it's just about learning how to properly export it so that way it doesn't take up too much space. That is part of it. Yeah. And stuff. Uh, aside from that, uh, I'm always on the lookout for new technology because you never know how new technology can maybe explore different aspects of my creativity that I'd never, you know? Yeah. You know, I, so know, I know you've been dabbling a little bit with like drone work. Yeah. So, and, and we talked a little bit about that. So like, like what drone do you have and like how you, how you incorporate that with shots? Well, I have, I have two drones at the moment. Okay. Um, the DJI Mavic Air 2, that one's very good for like cinematic shots, you know, of like, you know, saying get some wide shots too. And stuff like you could, you know, saying, but then the most recent one that I currently have with me that I'm going to practice with once we're done here is the FPV drone, a DJI Avada. Yeah. And that one is like the closest a person will ever get to feeling what it's like to be Superman when it comes to being able to fly between stuff, flying in between buildings, diving a bit and then coming up, you know, and it could still pull off shots like the DJI Mavic Air 2, but that one's designed to like really move like superman you know what i'm saying oh, okay and stuff like that and i'm still learning how to fly it but you know what I'm saying like because i was training even i was practicing virtually with it because yeah. I, I was virtually crashing a lot <laughs> and stuff <laughs> you know but i knew that i couldn't i couldn't not I, I had to bring it with me on this trip even though i wasn't even though i didn't feel like i was completely ready because 
no one's ever truly ready for it. You don't get to choose your time, no, you know? No. You either, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and you definitely got, like we said, you got to practice and play with it. Like, when you're flying those drones, like, I, I was at a video shoot once, and they were flying the drones to get the drone shot, and then birds started coming to attack the drone. Oh. So have you ever had that issue yet? Thankfully, no. <laughs> okay. I have not, but I would definitely say that the FPV would be more suited to Try to, you know, avoid it because it's more designed to be like, zzz, zzz, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. move. But the other drone, that one would definitely be more vulnerable, you know? Yeah. And stuff like that. But, you know, that's why you got to have warranty on this shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that way, if anything happens, it's like, but the good thing about DJI is even if you didn't necessarily buy warranty for it, they offer some type of like, Protection offer, plans with it already? Yeah, type of thing. Or okay. even if you have to pay something out of pocket, you know what I'm saying? It's a whole lot cheaper than replacing the drones because, boy, them drones ain't cheap, boy. No, no, they're not. So what are some uh, softwares you use maybe like for editing, color grading, and and transition or effects that you, you kind of rely on, on on a daily basis? Oh, definitely Lightroom Classic, okay. Adobe Photoshop because I've been keeping up with certain – oh, and another thing I do as well – is I look at certain pages to help me be aware of any new changes to Lightroom and Photoshop because they're always adding in new stuff. That way I can be aware of it yeah. and stay on top of it. Adobe Photoshop, Lightroom Classic, Premiere Pro, a little bit of After Effects, but I'm still being, I'm still learning that one. Okay. And then you were mentioning to me earlier about DaVinci Resolve when it comes to color grading. So I definitely want to look into that as well to see if that can also help me level up because no matter how much you know you got to keep yourself humble yeah and see for me like I, I jump between like uh, adobe premiere and then davinci resolve just because sometimes you go and run stuff in, in adobe and premiere and the rendering times forever you get those error codes constantly and crashing it seems like with davinci resolve i have less of that i have quicker mm. render time and then just color grading on there is just so much more easier because you can literally just put your mouse cursor on what area you want to do and you can take it up you can take it down you can change it you can select all your colors right there where you can do all that in, in adobe but you got to know what you're doing right you got to know the color grading yeah, systems and everything exactly but and in time you start learning that's keeping it simple is really what it's about yeah and that's that's where davinci resolve comes in man it makes color grading so much easier for me because like i was trying to start and learn that and i was sitting there watching adobe i was like man where's all this stuff at this and that and then davinci resolve just made it so much more sim a simplicity for me yeah but definitely bro have you ever had to push your creative boundaries or take risk in your work? Uh, Leaning over balconies? <laughs> well, yeah, de like definitely when I've had, when I do these events, there are, I kind of touched on it a little bit earlier, but there are times that when I, in order to get certain shots, I have to like, Take a, like even sometimes put my gear on the line in terms of like sometimes when I get certain shots in a pool or over a balcony type of thing, <laughs> you know, just to get certain shots because I know that it'll look really good and because no one ever really does it, you know? Yeah. So for me, when I take photos or videos in like, for example, a pool scenario, I'll literally have my camera just mere centimeters from touching the water just because... You know, when you're doing some shots, you got to be cunning enough to stare death in the eye, yeah, you know, that's... and stuff like that when it comes to your gear, just to be able to get certain shots right, because no one does it. And you have to, because Fresh Prince CEO said it best, how do you stand out? You know, you yeah. got every literal tactical advantage I you have to stand out even if it means aside from that or maybe if someone think it might be weird you have to take that risk that someone may think you're odd or a weirdo for it because at the end of the day you got to do what you got to do because most you know what I'm saying they're not going to be worried about you it's yeah. like the only one who's going to give a who's truly going to give a shit truly about your life is you because if you don't give a shit about your life then you're fucked yeah and and that's something too is like i always tell people like don't don't be afraid to do the weird quirky things that might change because Somebody at some point had to do something. Everybody looked at them like, what are you doing? Why are you Bingo, doing this? Bingo, exactly. But then it turns into the trend and then the standard of what everybody's doing. Like, for, I, used, I used the Ike Turner um, reference a lot because, like, he, he invented the distortion guitar. And basically it was oh, just really? because the speaker blew out on him. They didn't have enough money to go get another one, so he just kept playing with a blown-out speaker, and then that's why we have distortion guitars now. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, so, damn, I didn't know that. Yeah, so... Um, I always like to peop ask people this because we covered quite a lot, uh, so we're going to kind of wrap up a little bit. But I always ask people uh, towards the end of it is, what are some books you can recommend for people to read that can help them grow in your craft? Hmm. Definitely The Third Circle Theory would okay. definitely be one good one. We actually just had a Zoom call with uh, the author a few weeks ago in, in the CEO network. Yeah. So he's definitely one I'd recommend. 
And then 50 Cent's book, Hustle Smarter, is definitely a second one I would recommend. The third one is The Art of Human Chess by Pimpin Ken. Okay. And um, what's the fourth one? Um, let's see. Oh, uh, the fourth one that I would definitely recommend that I'm currently reading is Set for Life Yeah. as well. That's, that one's been a very good book. And then the fifth one, uh, man, I... D- I, I know it's like creativity, but I don't remember the name of it. I just remember I read it at a library at, at a junior college. But Man. those are the four primary books I would definitely recommend because understanding, because the third circle theory in particular, so you can understand why you have the limitations you have or why the people in your family, your friends, why they think the way they do, you know? Yeah. Because, oh, go ahead. Yeah, go, go, go. Uh, that people can give you, because here's the thing I've had to learn. People can give you, can be well-intentioned when they try to give you advice or what they think it's best for you. But you have to really, to put it very simply, like as Andrew Tate would say, is are they living the life you want to live? If they do, if they're not living the life you want to live, you got to be very skeptical. You know, you have to be skeptical about their advice, and you know, you got to be harsh like that. But and sometimes people will stop talking to you for it. But at the end of the day, they ain't worried about your life because when it comes times to face your problems, yeah, yeah, I said. And then that's why I love that those books kind of get kind of laid out too, because they're all kind of structured around business and the mindset. Mm-hmm. I don't know there really wasn't too much in there, but because like you can learn all this stuff on YouTube about video stuff or asking videographers. I love that the books that you kind of laid out kind of sets their mindset for how to run the business properly for themselves and get into that right mind frame. That's that's really good. So before we wrap it up, go ahead tell them where you can find you, what projects you're working on, how to get a hold of you, all that. Give your time to make your plug. Okay, perfect, perfect. So you can find. Find me on Instagram my, at Griot's Vision, G-R-E-O-S, Vision, V-I-S-I-O-N, on Instagram and on YouTube. And I also just created a, Insta, a YouTube channel for my shorts, Griot's Vision Shorts, where you can find me as well. Mm-hmm. A, uh, you know, and on my Instagram is the main place you can follow me, contact me. And uh, YouTube as well is where I post the vlogs and shorts. And... Mm-hmm. The other projects I'm working on aside from the parties is like, you know, sometimes on the side when I met these parties, sometimes I do some OF content on the side. But yeah. uh, that one's the reason I don't really talk about it too much is just because like I understand how, that I have to kind of lay the foundation for that. Yeah. Because that because that opportunity came out of me going to parties and that's some content in the future I'm going to get into. Oh, and also, I'm also getting into some real estate content as well with my fr- friend, Brandon Nava. Shout out to you, bro, uh, in Houston about yeah. like doing like 3D photos for like real, est- for, like, re- 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 real estate properties. Okay, very nice. Very nice, man. It was a pleasure talking to you, man. I'm glad you came through, learned a lot. Um, we're going to have to get you on Facebook, too, and teach you about that monetization and how to make money there as well. Oh, yeah. No, oh, yeah. That's actually another that thing. Yeah, that's another thing I'm getting into as well with the monetization stuff as yes. well, you know? Yeah, there's a lot of money left on the table there. And what you're doing, bro, I can teach you a bunch of things it help you bring in some extra money to help fund your business and shit so yeah yeah absolutely. appreciate that man yeah man it's a pleasure talking to you man i'm glad you came by man i'll have much success for your future man thank you yeah i appreciate that man absolutely